I made sustainability my default choice in the year 2018, and my vision for the year 2030 is to neutralize the impact of artificial intelligence on climate change. Seven years, one or three days, 15 hours, 12 minutes, and six seconds. The clock here is from Manhattan, which shows you the amount of time left to reverse climate change. Seven years, one or three days, 15 hours, 12 minutes, and six seconds. Let that sink in. On 25th of September 2019, approximately 6 million people across the world protested against the lack of action and ownership by global leaders on climate change. Yet, there are still a lot of people in the world who do not believe climate change is happening. The survey here is done by the Yale School of Environment on United States of America, which shows you that 12% of the people do not believe in global warming, while 47% believe that it's not going to affect them. But climate change is real, whether you believe in the science of it or not, and it will affect you. Even though you do not live in the cities that are currently facing wildfires, hurricanes, or are going to get submerged by the year 2050 in water due to climate change. The World Health Organization estimates that if climate change remains unchecked, then from the year 2030 to the year 2050, you will have about 2,50,000 deaths per year. In fact, there's also research which shows that climate change affects your mental health. So how do we stop this? A lot of people believe a way to decarbonize is to decomputerize. Technology does have a massive impact on climate change. Technology such as artificial intelligence, internet of things, has its own carbon footprint. A team at Stanford came up with a tool called Green AI, which shows you the amount of carbon emissions generated by an artificial intelligent algorithm. According to the tool, a natural language processing algorithm, which is widely used in Alexa, Siri, and other customer service chatbots, generates about 1,400 pounds of carbon emissions, which is equivalent to a person taking a round trip from New York to San Francisco. So does this mean we stop making innovations in technology? Technology has been the one thing that has kept us together in this COVID-19 pandemic. Technology is the way I'm communicating my thoughts with you. Technology is the method that we are using to online conference our office colleagues and even video chatting our friends and family, or even to get your most basic amenities from online grocery shopping. In fact, technology is the very same tool that we use to even spread awareness on climate change. Each tweet you post generates about 0.2 grams of carbon emissions. And there are about 500 million tweets which go out in a day. Shocked? Well, let me tell you how. Each tweet gets stored and processed in data centers. These data centers are used for almost everything on internet, from Google searches to Instagram posts to even Netflix and Amazon. To process the tweet and to share it with the rest of the world, these data centers run 24 past 7. Now this energy to run these data centers comes from burning of fossil fuels. To give you an idea of the intensity of this, in the year 2016, it was reported that the data centers across the world consumed about 416.2 terawatts of energy, which was more than the energy consumption of Britain that year, hence making data centers responsible for 2% of global emissions. Research shows that if data centers continue the way they do, then by the year 2040, they will be responsible for 14% of global emissions, which is equivalent to the emissions of United States of America right now. So how do we fix this? Is there a way for us to neutralize the negative impact of technology by using technology for good? The answer is absolutely yes. One of the most common solutions for this problem is to go green. That is, to use renewable energy sources to power your data centers instead of fossil fuels. But renewable energy sources comes with its own challenges. Challenge number one, they're intermittent in nature. That is, they're not constant, 24 power 7. Which leads us to our challenge number two. Can these intermittent sources be able to supply energy for 24 power 7 running data centers? Also, just shifting towards renewable energy is not enough. The energy pyramid here shows you exactly that. There is no point of just shifting towards renewable energy. We need to ensure that the systems are also energy efficient and have energy conservation in picture. Let me share with you three solutions where artificial intelligent algorithms can be used. Solution number one, 
Artificial intelligent algorithms such as load monitoring can be used with your sensors to manage and track your demand of the data centers. This ensures that the systems in the data centers work more efficiently, hence ensuring less amount of energy consumption. In fact, Google has already implemented this and seen a 40% drop in their energy consumption. Solution number two, since we knew renewable energy is not constant in nature, we need to ensure that the demand of the data centers is always met by the supply. This can be done by predicting your supply and demand by using time series forecasting. Solution number three, artificial intelligent algorithms can be used to schedule data processing across data centers in the world. For example, consider these two data centers. Data center one is in USA, while data center two is in Asia. During the morning in Asia, where solar energy is, is at its peak, the data centers here can run on solar energy and process the data. While during the night, this processing can be shifted to USA, where it's still day and solar energy there can be used. Each of these solutions are already implemented, but in small scale. Each of these solutions can reduce the carbon impact by minimum 20 to 60%. Not only are these solutions environment friendly, but also budget friendly, since renewable energy is much cheaper than fossil fuels. So now that we know these solutions exist, what do we need to make this happen? We need two things, one for the present and one for the future. Let's start with the present first. Like Bill Gates said, we need climate innovators. We need researchers, entrepreneurs, scientists, engineers, who understand the correlation between climate change and technology and create solutions like this. Now for the future, we need reducing carbon impact as one of the core values while developing anything new in technology. This not only applies for hardware, but software as well. Every algorithm that we generate, we need to ensure that the processing takes the least amount of energy, hence ensuring low carbon emissions. With this, I leave you with my vision, not just for 2030, but also beyond it. Progress in technology and mitigating climate change needs to go hand in hand. Neither one of them should happen at the cost of the other.